Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I wanted to talk to you about my favorite vlogging setup for musicians. And uh, really this is vlogging, but also just camera to capture like a drum video or a musician video. Really, if you are a musician that wants to capture yourself doing covers, worship songs, anything like that, I want to tell you my favorite camera. Um, so I'm just going to tell you though, I'm going to give you three options, three cameras that I really love at different price points. So my absolute favorite camera right now, 2021 today is May 16th, 2021 is the Sony A7C. This thing is an absolute beast. Now, um, I want to tell you why this, I think, is the best vlogging camera for musicians. Um, you know, the, one of the reasons I want to make this video is that there is so much information out there, so many things and so many specs that, for me as a musician, don't matter at all. Now, do I want great quality? Yes. Um, but am I concerned about bitrate over some other factors? No. So let me tell you what things that I want as a musician that sold me on this camera specifically, and there's some other cameras that meet this qualification too. Um, the thing that sold me on this the most of all is no recording limit. Now, um, Sony's been doing this for a while on a couple of cameras, but most cameras, most mirrorless cameras, most DSLRs have a 30 minute recording limit. Most uh, point and shoot cameras, uh, even interchangeable lenses, a lot of these, until you get into the cinema cameras, uh, more and more they're changing it, but for the most part, um, most of these cameras can only record for 30 minutes at a time. Now, that may be fine for you, may not make a difference if you're shooting covers, but for me, the, I want to be able to uh, record an entire church service or an entire concert, your entire gig without stopping. So this has no record limit, meaning I can just put this thing, let it record and let it go. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing that's amazing about this is an extremely long battery life. Now I've got a dummy battery that I can uh, rig up where it's not gonna die, but at the same time, I want a run and gun setup. To me, speed is more important than anything else because this is not my main thing. My main thing is the music. So production, this is secondary. So I have to be able to work quick. So the fact that I can just plug it in, um, not plug it in, not have to plug it in and just record is huge. So um, I have let this record for, I actually haven't exhausted the battery before, but it's recorded for two hours and 15 minutes uh, before me stopping and you know, the battery was, was reading low, but two hours and 15 minutes that's a great on one battery that's insane in my opinion so two things two major factors one is no record limit two is great battery life number three is extremely impressive low light performance so if you're like me a lot of times if i'm vlogging if it's you know in a church uh setting it's going to be really dark at the times that i'm talking maybe it's before the service begins they got the lights blacked out i'm saying hey what's up you know yada yada i want to talk to you about what's happening so this has incredible low light performance so you can just jack the iso up like crazy now again, if you are a videographer first, you're like, oh my word, I cannot believe you're gonna shoot over 1600 ISO, or you're gonna let your ISO be on auto, and oh my goodness, I can't believe that. Yes, because for me, capturing the content is first, production is secondary. Now, do I want it to be good? Yes, but that's secondary to the ability just to capture the moment. If I don't have great dynamic range, if I don't have a uh, great uh, low light performance, then it doesn't matter because I can't capture that moment, period. Um, the, uh, the next thing is no crop and 4K, so really great 4K footage um, and autofocus is incredible. So uh, previously I had the Canon M50, which I'm gonna talk about later. Um, and you can argue this, videographers, I don't really don't care, but to me, this eye and face detection on the Sony, uh, on this A7C is the best I've used as far as autofocus. I mean, it is just laser sharp and never misses, always captures my eye and does an incredible job. So the Sony A7C. Now, drawbacks, this thing is pricey, man. For me, this thing is so expensive. I mean, it is so expensive. Um, now, the other thing too is it has a flip out, fully articulating flip out screen, which again, if you're vlogging, is really important, it's really great. Uh, so that's the Sony A7C. Also, it takes just normal SD cards. So if you're into the cinema cameras and you want the fast, I don't know, we want the C fast or something. So this takes normal SD cards. Um, so. Uh, okay, this if this is too pricey. The step down from this, what I'm shooting on right now, uh, very similar, kind of the little brother to this, is the Sony A6600. Mm -hmm. 
which if you want to save, I think like 500 bucks, I'll put the price here. Um, but the Sony A6600 is an absolutely incredible buy as well. And um, I just needed to get another camera. I wanted two cameras that were matching, so that's why I upgraded to the A7C. But if you're just getting into this and you're like, man, I don't know, it's a lot of money, I would highly recommend the Sony A6600. It's got a lot of the same qualities. Uh, no um, record limit. It uses the exact same battery. It's got the same eye um, autofocus. It's got 4K. Um, now, this is a full-frame camera, the A7C. The Sony A6600 is a crop sensor. I'm gonna be super honest, not a big deal to me. I really don't care. Um, and in fact, what's great about the uh, the crop sensor um, in the A6600 is that you can get lenses that are really cheap. So I'm shooting on the Sigma um, 16 millimeter f1.4, which means I can go super, super shallow depth of field. And so I actually put that on, even though it's a crop sensor lens, uh, APS-C lens, I put that on my A7C and it goes into, I guess, Super 35, I don't know, it goes into like a, a crop sensor mode. So again, if you're a real videographer, you're gonna say, oh my word, I can't believe you're wasting that full frame on that 16 mil. You know, maybe so, but I think you can get that 16 mil for like 300 bucks and you can crank it down to F1.4. So if you're not familiar, basically F1.4, the aperture means the lower that aperture number, the more light the camera can let in. So in a very dark situation, it does, uh, it does two things. One, it lets in more light so you can be in a super dark environment. F1.4 is an incredible aperture. Um, it also gives you a really shallow depth of field. So that's also that really high production value. So right now I'm shooting at F2.5. So let me crank this down to F1.4. It's gonna get really bright, but um, the, what, the, the trade off is that it's gonna be so shallow. The depth of field is so, so shallow. I can turn my ISO down a little more. So I'm shooting at ISO 200 now. So the good thing again, the closer I get, you can see F1.4, the background is so, so blurry. Sorry, I'm really close to you. But um, when I'm shooting a lot of my videos, you can see people really comment, they like that production value because you get this nice crisp foreground and a really, really blurry background. So the lower the f-stop number, the more shallow depth of field you have. So a lot of lenses like F4, which is fine, but it's a darker lens. So I know that may be a lot of tech gear um, uh, conversation, but my number one camera, Sony A7C for those reasons. Are there uh, other cameras that have better bit rate? Yeah, absolutely. You know, man, if you want to shoot on a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K or 6K, great. But editing with those for me is a nightmare because the footage is so massive. I know you guys are going to hate on me for that, but I love working with this Sony footage because it's so simple. It's a smaller uh, format. I can't tell you the specs. I'm not really sure, but all I know is that it looks great. Uh, uploaded to 4K, looks phenomenal, easy to work with. Uh, the color science evidently has been upgraded in these newer cameras, so I really love those. Now, honorable mention, if you're like, bro, that is so pricey. Uh, I can't afford any of that. What can I shoot on? I shot for the longest time, and it's by far my favorite camera outside of these uh, as far as a vlogging setup on the Canon M50. Now, again, if you're a real videographer, like, oh my gosh, the Canon M50, it's a, it's a baby lens, you know, whatever. I, I love it. It's a baby camera. I love that camera. And this is the setup that I used. Um, it is EFM, meaning it uses the um, smaller mirrorless Canon mounts. And I used a Viltrox speed booster to adapt it to the EF lenses. Um, and so the Viltrox speed booster did two things for me that was really incredible. One, it converted that Canon M50, the EFM lenses to the full frame EF lenses. So you can use all the Canon stuff, which Canon has, in my opinion, the largest selection of lenses out there. And then also it uh, almost acts like a magnifying glass, so it gives you more aperture. So I shot on a 24 millimeter lens um, that was f2.8, but with the Viltrox speed booster, it made it f2.0. Now, you can pick up, I just looked, I saw you can pick up an M50 online for like 400 bucks. I saw one for 375 bidding on eBay, 350, 375, 400. You can get them all day for under $500, which is great. Then you get the Viltrox Speed Booster, and then you can use any Canon um, EF lens. Uh, again, I shot with the 24 millimeter, so that um, the uh, Speed Booster reduces that crop factor. So my earlier vlogs, a lot of those, all those were shot on the Canon M50. I actually sold to my friends over at the Convo plug uh, for them, Kurt and Colton, the Convo with Kurt and Colton. If you wanna see that camera in action, um, again, as of May, uh, 16th 2021 i think they've shot some content on there colton duty you can look them up on youtube um they're shooting with that canon m50 setup and they love it so uh yeah sony a7c sony a6600 and then canon e uh canon m50 now um let me talk really quick about some of the other uh pieces of gear that i use that i like and first of all let's talk about um 
the cage. So I have um, the uh, small rig cage on both my A7C and on the um, A6600. So this is important because if you are vlogging, um, you need to be able to protect your camera. It's a tool first, and again, if you're like me, you're gonna be running and gunning. So um, I use this small rig cage. I leave it on there always. So here's a small rig cage on the A7C. It attaches here on the bottom. You screws in with a thread right there, and then it's also got a small uh, screw right there. So this thing just protects the camera. You can see I've got this little guy mounted right here. Um, so I put that on there. I just screwed that in. It's a piece that I had because um, when I open this up and I plug in my microphone on the side, uh, the microphone, I dropped it. If I dropped it on there, it would just hit that microphone jack, and I would hate for my whole camera to be out of commission because the microphone jack got messed up. So a lot of times if I'm laying this down, um, I'm gonna lay it down like on the lens and this little uh, guy that I've added on there. So it's just like a little, you know, threaded uh, thing. I just found it in my, my uh, bag, but you can put all kinds of stuff on there. It's just the normal, um, I guess, quarter 20, eighth, I don't know, um, mounts here on the side. It's got mounts for your light and your stuff. Uh, so that's uh, the first thing is put a cage on the camera, which protects it because I'm vlogging, running around with it. Now, let me tell you about my favorite um, tripod. All right, this is my favorite tripod right here. This is a Manfrotto tripod, and I'll put a link to everything in the description below, but I'll tell you exactly what this is um, in the description below. But what I like about this, a couple things. For me, I don't like the Gorilla Pods. I know those are kind of like the popular vlogging pods, but for me, uh, tripods, but I'm not trying to wrap it around a lot of stuff. If I'm gonna mount it, I'm gonna use uh, like a small rig arm. But for me, what's great about this is, um, you know, I can extend, these have extendable legs here. So now, this is at a great distance. So I can vlog and hold it at a arm's length really well. Also, um, with these extendable legs, it's got two settings. You can see it's a really wide base. I can also change this uh, little guy right here over to like the other configuration, which is flat. So now this has like a massive footprint. So this is like a really big footprint. So if I'm laying this down, um, you know, I can do that. So this thing has been great. I've been using this for a couple of years. It's just simple. It's everything you want. It's really sturdy, but it's also light. It extends enough where you can, even if you're shooting at, you know, um, with a 24 millimeter, you know, you can get a good shot with that. Um, and yeah, this thing is great. All right, just for reference, I'm shooting on the A7C setup right now, holding the Manfrotto tripod. It's like arm's length on the 16 mil, but again, this is 16 mil, like APS-C crop, I guess, is what I'm understanding, because it automatically jumps into that APS-C mode. But really quick, I wanted to show you some potential drawbacks to the A6600. The first one being um, the screen. It does not have a fully articulating screen. It's got the flip up screen, which honestly, after I, I got it, I got this one first before the A7C, and you just get used to it. It's not really a deal breaker for me. Second thing is the memory card is stored in the battery compartment as opposed to the side here on the A7C, which it's a little harder to get to, but not a deal breaker for me. And then thirdly um, is it's not full frame, which again, not really a deal breaker for me. So uh, I started with the A6600. That's the one I bought first. It was before the A7C came out. Um, so I wanted to get a second camera. So I went ahead and decided to jump to the A7C just to have the top of the line one instead of getting two A6600s. I just wanted to see if there's a difference. So um, again, I love and shot on the A6600 for a while until I wanted to upgrade to the A7C and I would definitely recommend this, but I wanted to make you aware of some actual usable differences in this camera. So are any of these to me a deal breaker? If you want to save 500 bucks? No, absolutely not. It's a great camera. I used it, highly recommend it. Just a couple of differences uh, to note. Uh, that's that tripod, the Manfrotto tripod. Next is the light that I use. So um, I use this Aperture ALM9. So this is just a small LED light. You just mount this on here because again, a lot of times I'm in low light situations. So that guy just mounts right on there. That's kind of the size of that light on there. You just click this on and it's, you, it's got like, I don't know, probably 10 settings. You can turn up, you can turn it back down. And um, yeah, that's, this light is great. Now, I just picked up this light right here, I'll show you. This is by Newer, and it's like a $10 version of that. So it's a little bit bigger, um, but again, I think it's literally 10 bucks. You can see I was using it, am using it. So this is a size comparison for those. So it's not like it's you know massive, it's a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, this is the Newer SL12. And actually what I like about this is once you lock this in, it can click 360 around to these little predetermined spots 
So it's actually a nice feature. So I'm gonna put this back because I'm using this as my fill light, I guess. Okay, and then last but not least on this uh, kind of setup is the microphone. So I'm using the Movo VXR10 Pro. So they have a, a VXR10 and then a VXR10 Pro. Uh, the Pro is crisper and cleaner. I've got a whole video about that microphone, so you can check that out. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a rundown of some of my favorite gear. Again, whether you are trying to get into vlogging, um, specifically just to, to vlog, there's a lot of options out there. But for me, as a musician, and as someone on the road, uh, if you're shooting on the road, for me it's not necessarily on the road, but the fact that I'm just run and gun, I'm just kind of run in, I want to shoot, I want to get in and out. To me, the Sony A7C is a beast. Again, just to recap why I love this thing, and the A6600, either one of these have the same properties as far as my favorite things, is no record limit, incredible battery life, access to lenses that are not that expensive, uh, great looking 4K, and amazing eye focus, and great low light performance. So to me, those things make my workflow really, really great, really, really easy. Um, and they're just incredible cameras. So uh, yeah, 2021, that is my favorite uh, list of vlog cameras for musicians. The Sony a7C coming in at number one, then the uh, Sony a6600 at number two. And then for me, honorable mention, because I use it, there's other cameras that compare, but as far as like best bang for the buck, the biggest thing you lose is the record limit. You've got a 30 minute record limit on the Canon M50, which was the biggest reason. And you don't have 4K. You have 4K in the M50, but it crops in and you lose the dual pixel autofocus. Uh, so for me, the two biggest things I jumped to the Sony from the Canon was no record limit. Um, and then the battery life was incredible and going to 4K, no record limit and jumping to 4K. Two big selling points for me. So if you got any questions, let me know. Um, again, everything I'm shooting here on my channel is with the Sony a7C. This video is shot on the a6600 with the uh, Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4, the little newer light, and then the, um, uh, the Movo uh, microphone. So if you have any questions, let me know. Everything is linked in the description of this video. You can check out all of this gear, links to everything. If you wanna kind of build up your setup, I've got linked all the stuff that I use and I talked about in this video in the description below. So check that out. If you got any questions, let me know. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, feel free to do so, man. I've got tons of drum videos, also some gear reviews, stuff like this. I'm um, everything musicians related. Um, I've got merch, so I've got these, um, great like light jackets, uh, hats, shirts, all that kind of stuff. And I'm giving drum lessons on Patreon. So you guessed it, everything is linked in the description below. Thanks so much for checking out this video and we'll see you guys in the next one.